Hey everybody, I uh, want to do a video um, for Core Art Rest. It is going to this time demonstrate from the client end or client application in this regards um, to demonstrate the Core Rest APIs that are on the IBMI system. In the videos of the past, I would demonstrate the product on the IBMI, where the APIs are built and how they are consumed uh, through Postman, an API testing client. Um, but now we've gone ahead and we've generated a, a ASP.NET uh, port 3.0 MVC application to uh, demonstrate as a proof of concept how easy it is for any front development uh, shop to consume these APIs. Um, there's no sense in migrating all your DB2 data to an SQL server just so your .NET developers can consume the data from it. Um, use this APIs and Core OS system and they can just go straight for the data just like they would consume any other uh, REST web service to get data from any other modern system. Um, all right, so so here we go. Uh, right, what we got on the right is the uh, .NET client running. Um, on the left is our iSeries, and we currently have the server down. We want to demonstrate uh, the user-friendly messages you get when, when errors occur, so you're not just left in the dark trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so, yeah, don't let the colors here fool you. Uh, this is definitely a .NET application. Train, staying true to the uh, green screen color scheme with the black background and the green text. Sorry, had to do it. So anyway, all right, our server's down. We've got that turned off here. Uh, we ran it, so if we refresh this, it's going to execute another API to go out to the IBMI and try to call an API to load a list of APIs that we can demonstrate. With. So we get here, error connecting to IBMI HTTP endpoint. Ensure the server is up and running and try to request again. That's a simple one. We'll go over here. We will start the server, which is our core SSL TLS encrypted um, Apache server instance. So, all right, the server's starting. So we'll just give it a second and give it a refresh and it will try to re-execute that API and it will connect with the IBM this time and, and call one of the core REST APIs to load a list of APIs to work with. So here we go. Though I'm suspecting on the first call, it's going to look for a license key, which it does. Um, so any fresh install of this product would want a license key to continue. We're going to take a little shortcut here and sneak a key in there so we can do our demo. Um, nine. Okay, that key's there. So now, let's get out of here. Let's go into our CoreRS product. This is where all the APIs are developed and maintained, even the, the server instance, uh, which is created, deployed at the, just one simple menu option. You can be using this in, in 30 minutes and running this. Um, we won't get into that. We've done that in previous videos, but we will see if we do an F7, we will see the server out here running. And that's the server, which the clients are communicating through HTTP to consume these APIs. So let's back out of here. And our key's in place. Let's re refresh the screen, and there it goes. It gets past the trial key issue, and it loads our list of APIs that are over here in the Core IRS product under the option one, maintain API library. So if we go into that, we will see a good list of sample APIs to play with when you, down, when you install this product. And it's just the same list that you see over here. Um, our first one is a simple, simple API call. It calls it and it just, it's actually not even calling a child program on the iSeries. It's just gonna go out to the endpoint and make sure that it's reachable and there's no issues. And it gives you a response time of how quickly it does that. So if we consume that guy, um, yeah, see, I mean, my program, that's the middleware program, record, record endpoint execution time only, no child program was executed, extremely fast, um, 0 0.05 milliseconds. So that's just making sure you can reach your endpoint, which um, we already get an error, friendly error message if we can't do that anyway. But that's something to play with. Um, the next one is uh, an API to simply go out. And you know, before I describe the API, let me show you what's going on here. This is the library the API program exists in. It's the same information you see here, the libraries. All these programs, these IBMI programs, exist in the Core REST core library. And there are simply SQL RPGL programs that are auto-generated through this product. And, you know, the administrator or the IBMI developer will just plug in several parameters to help generate the, the um, API. 
Um, that's in other videos. We won't get into that here, but it's the same information. And then the request example is basically the JSON request that's passed from the client to the IBMI that tells us what we're trying to retrieve back. And for this particular one, we're going to be passing to, let's make this big. We're going to be passing a schema and a table, and we actually can pass a list of them. And so our list consists of um, this table inquire rest and this RST002T inquire rest. So when we execute this, it's going to go out and it's going to look at the system tools tables um, for SQL to pull the table layouts, just so we can see how fast and quickly this runs. So if we can zoom this, it goes out, and it, it executed this program right here, and it ran this request right there, same thing you see on the other side, and it executed a list of instructions in the API, which are put in through a user interface that generates the API code, and the main query in here is this guy, we'll take a peep at it, and see it went out and it built a JSON object Converted the character, sorry about all this, and it, 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 pulled, it pulled the table layout information from the two systems columns. Um, so we could dynamically get these table layouts uh, just to show as a demonstration purpose. Um, so back out of this, and more. So that's, that's that one. So we go back to our list. And something we can do here is we can modify the request example. We can do it here, and it's the same thing as if we go into the um, maintain API library and do it here. It's the same information. Um, so this one is get table layout. So we go in here, and we'll see the same request example. That's basically what it's loading here. And you have an option to change it over here or over here to change your parameters. So you can just play with the APIs and see how they interact. Um, what we're going to do for a test is we're going to give it an invalid uh, JSON and see how it responds to that. So if we sneak an invalid character in here into the JSON um, request structure and say update, it goes out, it literally, let me show you what it does, it executes this modify API request API that we got set up. And before it updates that request example, it will validate the JSON to see if it's legit. And in this case, it's saying IBMI API program API 004, which is this one. It reports a JSON request appears to be invalid. Please evaluate the content of your JSON string, ensuring it is valid, and we try your request again. So we come back out here, and we want to modify the request again, and we make sure that that invalid character is not there. It did not update it because of that. So let's make sure it is valid. And if we just update the command name in here to something illegal that's not over here in the API list, that's a valid JSON structure. It's just got invalid uh, parameter information in it. So that should accept. And you see how it, it updated here. So literally, it, it executed this API request very quickly from the uh, .NET application. It went to the IBMI. IBMI, it updated, it ran this program. It, ins it checked to see if it was valid JSON. It didn't updated it in the table, then it brought it back here and refreshed it on the screen, all in milliseconds. Um, so what happens if we try to consume that in that in that command? This particular command uh, is not G-E-X-T table. Let's see because it's a little, but it can slide over, table layout. That is not a valid command that's in the library. So if we try to consume it, we get a friendly error message. IBMI program, the middleware program, says the command, this, is not found in the IBMI library because it's nice. It's got one in there, but it's got an X in it. So let's go back. And this time, instead of updating it here, we're going to come over here, and we're going to uh, give it two. We're just going to come in here, and we're going to take that out. And it's a little bit tedious in the green screen, believe it or not, to edit JSON, but we can do it. So we delete that, put that there, delete this one here, and that's a valid JSON string. And we will hit enter and update that request example. And just to be sure, 
we will validate it from this side. Six and JSON request is valid. So now, you see how it's still invalid here because we have to refresh the screen. So when we refresh it, it's going to re-execute the list of APIs API and reload our list of APIs. And we see that it gets the updated version of the request example. Now, if we consume it, works fine, no problem. So there's some good built-ins to be sure that anything that's passed through the I series is checked and validated. And if it sees an error, it's going to re respond something back very, um, very informative and friendly instead of just crashing. Um, no blaming it on the IBMI series guys this time. Okay, so um, let's move on and let's see here. This particular API is uh, get customer bank account information. You can pass it an array of different customer numbers to get the information for. And let's just execute this one. And it goes out and it looks up every one of these customer numbers in the tables on the high series and it pulls back all the information that we've defined as the response criteria. Um, very simple. Something else that's kind of clever about this is if we don't want to deal with big bulky JSON requests and we just want to say, just get me a customer number um, very simply in a REST type format with a noun and a verb, we can do that. So let's modify this request. And there's what it looks like as a JSON. But what we can do, and this is built into the API, I can detect either one of these variances of a request. We're going to just simply give it more of a noun verb rest format. Say, give me customer uh, bank account information for, let's say, 222. Customer 222. Take that JSON out and update the request. And now we've got a new simple looking request example. And um, we'll zoom in. You should just bring back two to customer 222 back. And it did. Just plain and simple. Now, these APIs, these programs, once it generates these APIs based on basic inputs that you put in here, and of course, this is covered in previous videos, but as a refresher, you just plug in simple parameter information and then a query to help pull the response. But it generates that code, then you can go into that code and, and you can really add on to the code and enhance it further if you need to, you know, to produce even larger, more complex responses. Uh, you can even call existing legacy programs that do something, uh, generate this or generate that or updates this and that, and then it you know, brings back success or failure statuses. You can execute um, high series commands with these APIs. You can do anything. Uh, it's really sweet and flexible. So anyway, that's kind of an overview of this. If you sit this, it gives you kind of a summary of what this product's for and how you would use it. And um, just an overall uh, idea. Included with this, this .NET application is going out on GitHub where you can look at all this code. You could use the code. You could download the IBMI product, Core IRS product to your system. You could pull up Visual Studio uh, code with uh, the GitHub code from this, pro uh, this proof of concept, and you could run it. And you could be playing with this, uh, you know, right, right out of the box. And really a simple solution. There's no need for, for migrating tons of DB2 data to an SQL Server database when you can have a little simple system like this that can access your DB2 data through HTTP requests in real time. Um, it's just a new mindset for I-Series type um, talent. To, 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 to. <laughs> We're so used to maybe dropping some parameters into a data queue and having some asynchronous process do some processing and spit some random result out on the other side and out of order. But getting in the mindset of using HTTP and real time request response JSON to the front end, um, that's the key with a lot of this I series modernization efforts. Um, so I can't think of anything else to show you here on this. So uh, appreciate your time and uh, go to the website, uh, jeffersonvaughn.com and you can download both of these and get the, uh, the, the code for the .NET client as well from GitHub. Okay, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.